Hello and welcome back to the railway. Today we're going to have a look at the steeple cab R254, a model that was available between 1959 and 1964. So we're just going to give the wheels a good clean here. The chassis has an R at either end here, so this will be the return side for the current. So these wheels are not insulated. If we turn it around and have a look at this side, we can see the chassis has an I in the moulding here. And this is the side which collects the current normally. Here's the wiper. So these wheels are insulated from the axle. So when we have this switch set like it is at the moment, we collect current from the overhead pantograph from a cable connected to here. If we select this switch over here, we're going to pick up current from the track. So when operating from the pantograph, the insulated side of the locomotive needs to be placed on the track closest to the power mast, as the return path is via the rail furthest away from the power mast. On the underside here, we've got built in Britain, and then Triang, and two different model numbers here. R252, which was the maroon version of this model with a plastic pantograph. That was available in the primary series from 1959 to 62 and here we've got R254 which is this the green model that we're looking at here today that was available 59 to 64. And we'll just gently do up this screw just nip it into the plastic just so it prevents the, the chassis from wobbling or rattling. If we do it up too tight we'll split the bodywork. There we go and we've got these nice painted lights at this end I've got the red buffer beam, normal train decoupling here, and I've got the metal buffers. And the other, the other end of the local is near identical. We've got the three lights painted in white there, standard train coupling here, and the metal buffers, and we've got the buffer beam with minimal detail, a hook moulded in here. We can just see here and here where the chassis pokes through the body and helps secure it on. Looking from the side, we can see we've got riveted detail everywhere, right along all the surfaces. We've got these huge vents on both bonnets. We've got a wonderful cab door here with the BRD car on it. We've got handrails running the length of the bonnets and under the windows and down both sides of the door. Detail on the other side is identical as far as I can see. A metal operating pantograph with a single spring. And the switch we saw on the chassis earlier protrudes through the body here. It's got three settings, we've got collection from overhead, no collection, and collection from track. Looking at the other bonnet here, it seems to be identical, minus the switch. And I almost forgot to mention the wheels. Definitely solid wheels on this model, and very plain coupling rods. And look at these items here, I'm not quite sure what they are, they're at both ends of the model. We have these great steps with rivets on them on both sides. Now off she goes, up the incline, and around towards the suspension bridge. And I think this model really came about because Triang were trying to sell more catenary. And what they needed was a cheap little model to try and encourage people to buy more of the range. Now we'll bring it down the incline here and we're gonna work our way around and bring it back onto the inside line so we can pick up some interesting wagons from the sidings. Look at that pantograph bobbing up and down underneath the double gantries there, really pretty. Passing underneath the elevated section now and approaching the station, we're going to have this great long shot as she approaches the station and passes the EMU. And we're going to bring her through points number eight here, put that smoothly through there and we'll close those up behind her. Passing the engine shed and now approaching the brick wagons, we're going to get to points number 18 here and we're going to bring it gently to a stop. And then we'll open points 18 and take it back into the sidings there. Just coming through point 16 and number 15 there to pick up this short rake of interesting wagons. The rake's made up of R18, the cable drum wagon, available 53 to 71. The open wagon with oil drum load, R245, available 1960 to 61. R13, the coal truck with load, available 1950 to 61. And finally, the open wagon with a timber load, R246, available 1960-61. to 61. A very interesting set of wagons, these. Now we're just running behind the engine shed here, approaching the incline. 
and we'll take her all the way up and we'll bring her to a stop just at the top of the incline and then we'll have a brief look at these wagons. Here we have a cable drum wagon. I'm just using this one to demonstrate why we've got the elastic band on. You can see these later cable drum wagons didn't have holes in the deck and the bottom of the cable drums had a flat on them and they just stand on there so we need the elastic band to hold them in place. I suppose we could glue them on but I think the elastic band looks better. So we'll just put this one to one side. This is a slightly earlier cable drum wagon and we can see it has holes in the deck and also the floorboards run the other way. And if I just pull that cable drum off we can see it has little spigots in the bottom of the moulding to enable it to be just pushed into the deck and that could run around the layout and they'll stay put. So we'll just put this to one side as well. And this is the one we've, we've had on the layout there. You can see we've got the elastic band just hooked around the buffers to hold the cable drums in place. Cable drums are available with different, different badges on the side and this has a running number of B913011 and it says 13T there. We'll just pick this up and have a, have a look at it. You can just see the running number there. You can see it's a, a metal, metal based model with sleeved wheels, got the single axle running through. And here we've got the Triang name and made in England. Here we've got the R10 open wagon with a running number of W1005 and 12T, 12 tons on the end there. Lots of metal strapping detail and wooden planking here. It runs right the way around. And we have interior detail as well. You can see the, the planking on the bottom of the molding and the sides there. Quite a nice little model. And it's got a metal under frame, this one and spoked wheels and it's got the axles with the sleeved wheels on it. Underneath here we can see Triang and it's got two different model numbers on it. It's got R10 and R13. R13 was the, the model number given to this model when it was sold with the coal load which we'll have a look at in a second. When it was sold with the oil drum load like this one it was model number R245 here we've got the box for it here, we can see 245 open wagon with oil drum load and the price has been written on in biro there, quite a nice little box. And there's the oil drum load, it's a simple plastic moulding, just inserts into the wagon like that. Here we have another R10 open wagon and this time this one's in brown. They were available in a number of different colours. This one was actually sold as model number R13, the coal truck, and it had a coal load. You can see R13 there, and the price has been written on in pencil. Again, we'll just put that to one side, and here is the coal load. Quite a simple plastic moulding, little feet on it, so it just slots in the wagon like that. We'll just have a quick look at that. Again, same running number as the previous wagon, W1005, 12 tons. And underneath here we can see the name Triang, somebody's put some blue and white paint on it. Made in England, R10 stroke 13 there. And again, still sleeved wheels, and metal under frame. And at the end of the rake we've got model number R246, open wagon with the timber load. We'll just put the box to one side. There's a simple plastic insert shaped like a stack of timber. Quite a nice little moulding. And we'll just pop that in there. Now these R10 open wagons started life right at the beginning of the Triang Railway system in the early 1950s and went right through to the Hornby Railways period in the early 1970s. Now I've just been communicating with another YouTuber called David Atkins, who has a YouTube channel and he puts out a, a video every Tuesday called Trains on Tuesday and he covers lots of aspects about the Canadian railways and Canadian model railways and many other aspects of model railway as well. Now he's just got one of these in chocolate brown with SR on the sides which we think comes from the early 1970s. 
and his channel is well worth a look, not just for the trains but the stunning landscape. So I will put a, a link to his channel in the description box, it's well worth a look. And just before we get back to the railway, this is the box that the steeple cab came in. We can see its model number here, R245. And the, the label suffered a little bit here, the tape's been torn away and it's taken part of the label with it. I think this would have said 040 and then S slash C for steeple cab, loco, operating, pantograph. So it's one of those nice lift off lid boxes and it's a pretty good shape. You can see again, the tape's been torn off it, but these things happen, but still nice to have the box. Just away now for one last run around the layout with these very long running wagons. As we've seen, both different types here were in the range for a very long time, making it right through to the Hornby Railways period in the early 1970s. Looking great with that pantograph just bobbing up and down gently there as she comes across the bridge. Now we have to back off the power a little here. She picks up a little speed coming down. Once she's off the incline, we're gonna have a great view of the pantograph as she passes the chocolate and cream coaches and the Britannia sitting in the passing loop there. Now this model, initially in BR livery like we see here, ended its life as part of Trains Transcontinental range. So I'll leave you this week with page 23 of the 1963 catalogue and we'll see how she looked as part of the Transcontinental range. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.